one of the most popular things that people ask me a lot is what is your A1C? And it's a really interesting question. (laughs) I can't even talk right now, but it's an interesting question because yeah, it's like we all want to know, you know, when I guess maybe not all of us, but it's just, it's kind of cool to know like what other people are doing for their A1C and stuff. But at the same time, if your A1C isn't very good or you know, if it's higher than it should be, I guess is what I mean when I say if it's not very good. Um, it's so easy to base your self worth on numbers. There's how much you weigh. There's what your blood sugars are. What your A one C is. Just it's so easy to base like how well you're doing on so many levels or how worthy you are or you know by what size you are and what your a1c is and or maybe like what it's not right it's so easy to just get caught up in the numbers game especially when you are also juggling diabetes because your life depends on numbers but it your worth does not depend on numbers so even if you are not where you want to be yet or you feel like you could do better it's not I think it can be so easy to kind of like feel shitty about it because even when my A1C goes up a little bit and it does because, you know, depending on what the months are like, sometimes when I'm traveling a lot, I don't really have control over, you know, being on an airplane. It's like all of a sudden, you know what you need to do. You know, you're going to be more sedentary and you need to make proper adjustments. But When your body goes through changes and shifts, it takes a bit for your body to get used to those new things. So even when you know what to do or you have an idea like, okay, I need to increase my basal or whatever it is, you still might find that your body doesn't quite catch up as fast because it still needs to get adjusted to what you're doing. And so it, it can be easy to really just base your worth on what you're doing. And if that's how you're feeling right now, you're not alone. But just for a second, if you can maybe look at it as, hey, you know, this is where I want, this is where I am now and this is where I want to be. And then there's so many little steps in between that you can do in order to just put one step forward in the right direction. And instead of looking at it as like, I can do better, I can do better, I can do better. And like, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. Just think of it as like, okay, these things are coming to the forefront because they're here to show you more of an opportunity, like how you can do better because without them, you're you're not going to make that a priority, right? Because it, it doesn't matter. So that's what I have to say about that. And I also want to say, I am excited about this episode today. But I am going to be turning on the AC periodically, so we might have a couple breaks because otherwise I'm going to overheat and then I feel like I'm going to get heat stroke and that just wouldn't be very cool. So just so you know. Um, But number one is to get your A1C under 6% is, you know, it's a great goal to have. And I think wherever your A1C is right now, like you're doing amazing. You're exactly where you need where you need to be because wherever you are, even if it's not where you want to be, it's just an opportunity for you to, you know, do get get better if that's what you want. Like it's it is an opportunity, not so much an, of an obstacle if you choose to see it in that light. For years and years, my A one C was always stuck in the sevens and eights, but when I was younger, I just I didn't really. It's not that I didn't care, but I thought it was good. (laughs) Like if my A1C was a seven, I would be super stoked on that. And I just didn't really care to get it any better because I just, I think that I didn't have the knowledge that I have now and um, it just, it was not top priority. So when, when it did... (laughs) wow, I can't even talk right now, (laughs) but when I did get it down, um, then it became a priority. And I think if you're focusing right now on getting your A1C down, one thing that can be super helpful is instead of, you know, say your A1C is an eight or nine, instead of being like, okay, I want it to be 5%, which is a great goal to have, don't get me wrong, but maybe set a smaller, more attainable goal. Not that it's not attainable, but one that once you, like a smaller goal, because once you reach that, 
it kind of gives you a push, more motivation to get it down even further. So if that resonates with you, that's something that has helped me a ton too. So like when my A1C was a six, then I'm like, okay, I'm going to get it down to a 5.4. I don't know why I said 5.4. It could have been like 5.8, but you know, I worked down in increments. So, and then when I got that, I was like, okay, now what's next, right? So, um, the number one thing that, and we're going to cover three things that have helped me, um, they are probably my top three that not only have helped me lower my A1C, but I really focus on them just on a daily basis because they're the three things that help me keep my blood sugars in range on a daily basis. So, Number one is resistance training. The bigger muscles you have, the bigger of a tank you have to store excess glucose um, after meals, if that makes sense. So even when you're resistance training, when you're strength training, you might find that during that workout, it increases your sugars a little bit, but then after you're more insulin sensitive, that can even happen up to 72 hours post-exercising, post-resistance training. So it really is helpful. And again, the bigger your muscles, just the better your blood sugars are going to be. <laughs> That's what I found personally. But when it comes to building muscle, what you really want to focus on, and I'm going to give you one core key tip today is because if you just you know go out there and you start lifting weights or whatever you're probably not like it's gonna be a good workout but you're not going to be actually creating the change needed in order to build muscle more and you want to be effective you want to know that what you're doing is actually working right so the number one thing is to really uh focus on your progression so this could be one of the simplest forms is progressive overload when you're working out at the gym, like increasing volume by looking at your rep sets, your weight, and really making sure that every single time you're doing that exercise, you're progressing. So if you don't know about, we're not going to go into progressive overload on this episode today, but if you want to, you can Google it, but um, that's going to be huge. That's key. So you really want to have bigger muscles. Resistance training is key. And then look at, you know, okay, you want bigger muscles. How are you going to make sure that you're progressing and look at your progression? You can Google all of that. And that's my number one tip for that. So that's number one. Number two is just accuracy with your insulin to macro ratios. And the reason I say macro instead of carb is because you are going to be affected by fat and protein as well as carbs. So everyone's gonna be affected differently. Again, our bodies are so unique and so individual. But basically, when I am eating large quantities of fat, I am gonna be bolusing for that. And same goes for protein. If I'm eating, typically it said if you eat 75, I think it is, to like 100 grams of protein in one sitting, it could increase your blood glucose similarly to eating 20 grams of carbs. For me personally, if I'm eating above like 54 grams of protein in one sitting, then I will typically do a small bolus for that. But our bodies are so different, so you just have to like see what works best for you, in my opinion. Um, So yeah, we're not going to go into all of like what increases your blood sugars when it comes to macros. Um, But when it comes to just accuracy, I use a food scale for this very reason because that way not only are you knowing exactly how many grams of each macro you're consuming, but it really does just make it possible for you to bolus accurately for that amount instead of being like, okay, you know, my fitness pal says that this amount of oats has 36 grams of carbs and whatever fiber and five grams of protein or whatever it is, right? And then just using that, I really weigh it all out so I know exactly what I'm doing. It's just, it helps. So it sounds crazy, but it helps so much. So that's what I do. 
And um, yeah, it just helps you be super accurate. So I use a digital food scale that weighs in both grams and ounces. And then I also use my fitness pal um, because that way I can input these amounts and just know exactly like the uh, the gr- amount of each macro that I'm consuming. And if it's carbs, then I will subtract the fiber. So if it's any more than five grams of fiber, typically they say any more than five grams will you should subtract. But even sometimes if it's just like a few grams, I will still subtract that because sometimes I need to, especially if I've trained that day and I'm more insulin sensitive and it's in the evening when I'm even more insulin sensitive, then yeah, I think like <laughs> like I'm affected by even smaller amounts of fiber. So I need to subtract those. But that's for another day, another episode. But this is what I do. And so a food scale just helps with the accuracy. Number three is a CGM, a continuous glucose monitor. And this one, none of these are in order, but this one, I mean, none of them are more important than another, but a CGM has honestly been life-changing. And if you have one, then, whoops, I totally... And if you have one, then you know how life-changing a CGM is. If you don't have one, it is life-changing. I'm not going to lie, but you have to be ready to get it. And even if I know not everywhere in the world you can get continuous glucose monitors yet, because even in Costa Rica, like they're... I don't think they're even available because I actually <laughs> researched it. I'm like, hmm, I can't get Dexcom here right now. So is there any other CGMs I can get? But there wasn't any. So I I just, I recommend if you have access to get a CGM, then get one because it's so helpful, especially if you want to lower your A1C. But they're helpful because... Um, really, not only can you catch your highs and lows in advance so that you're not dealing with them. Like you'll see the arrows go up. You can see how fast you're going up or going down and you can really give yourself an insulin correction or treat with treat your low blood sugar by the smallest increment before it actually happens. So that way, by the time, like if you have double arrows going up, by the time you should be super high, your the insulin has kicked in and and you start going down again like it's just it's so helpful and not only that but you you're able to see data over you know I'll look I don't really go into my data because I feel like whoops that would be in my alarm <laughs> but I don't really go into the data too much because I I guess I'm just lazy but I do look at my trends my 24 hour trends and I will base I'll basically look and see what I did that day where I need to make an adjustment like if it's a trend that happens for a week long I'm like okay I need to make a basal adjustment but it gives you so much insight of what's going on behind the scenes instead of just shooting in the dark a little bit right because you can you can guess what you need to do but having that data and actually being able to see it gives you insight in a way that you wouldn't otherwise have and it really helps you in order to get your a1c down so these three things have really 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 been life-changing for me and i i think that i mean obviously we're all so different but if you were to apply them to your life too you would definitely be able to get your a1c down and achieve your goals and i also just wanted to say that nothing happens overnight you have to it's like building a better body. It's like fitness or building. I honestly, if you're into fitness, then it's even building a business could be like compared to fitness because there's so many things in life that you can kind of just uh, think of fitness as like you have to be so consistent and compliant with what you're doing you have to ride that train and then when you make a mistake or mess up whatever forgive yourself and keep pushing forward because it's not about anything that you did in the past it's not about your mistakes and it's just about staying where you are right now in this present moment and doing the very best you can in the present with the resources that you have and then every single day just 
doing that again and again, right? Because that is how you are going to get to where you want to be. And so if you've set a goal for your A1C, I know that you can get there. It's going to take some work, but you will get there and just know that it might take some time. So you have to be patient. You have to be kind to yourself and just do the very best you can every single day and you will get there. All right. I hope this episode is helpful for you today. I hope it inspired you in some way. And don't forget, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast if it did. And I will talk to you very, very soon. Okay. Bye for now.